We're back at training camp and it was a pretty good day. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and day whatever of training camp. I'm not really sure which day it is. This is day eight of training camp and lots of things uh, to talk about. So let's just jump right in. I think the biggest piece of news coming out of camp today is going to have to be that Dalvin Cook was there at camp watching practice from the sidelines uh, and just seeing how things were ran. My expectation is that we're going to have a deal with him sooner rather than later, probably by the end of the day. Now, there is this narrative going around that he's trying to leverage the New York Jets to try to get more money from Miami, which, again, kind of makes a little bit of sense. If he can get more money from Miami, the tax-free, not tax-free, but no state income tax versus the state income tax and, you know, New Jersey and all of those things, those things might make sense, especially if he's not really all that hungry to go and chase a ring, and he would be the premier back in Miami. Miami does not have a running back one that would be better than what Dalvin Cook has, but you have to hope that, one, he sees the value of playing with Aaron Rodgers and what we're building here in New York. But we'll see what amounts from that if he leaves the building without a contract, if he goes and continues to visit with the Patriots and the uh, and the Dolphins. Who knows? I'm hoping we can get the deal done sooner rather than later. Also, in a bit of news, not related to practice, but kind of related to the Jets, Quan Alexander signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers, so he's no longer available as an option for the New York Jets, which makes a ton of sense bringing it back to the New York Jets practice. It seems like this coaching staff is really, really high on Jamie and Sherwood. I've been talking about him, you know, constantly with every opportunity that I've been given because I think he has just absolutely done such a good job. But I think the other player that they've been really, really impressed with is Zaire Barnes, the rookie that they drafted this year. Um, I don't think that they were expecting much more out of him than him just being a special teamer uh, originally, but I think that with his reps that he's getting with the second team, that he has really showed up to, and, and, and produced at a high enough level to say, you know what? we might feel comfortable with our depth. Now, this doesn't mean that the New York Jets can't go and get another linebacker or another safety because the expectation might be that maybe a guy like a Jordan Whitehead or an Adrian Amos can play that hybrid safety linebacker role um, when asked into in certain situations. Uh, and you could absolutely see that. But my expectation is that this team feels incredibly comfortable with their defensive back room and their linebacker room. And we're not going to see any more free agent signings there that we're going to save the money for the trade deadline to see if there's any big fish that shake free. Moving on, Makai Becton was back in practice running full 11-on-11 11 11 drills, uh, full contact, full speed, everything like that. Uh, this time, he was running with the twos, um, which was interesting. They kept Max Mitchell at left tackle and Billy Turner at the right tackle. All this really tells me is they wanted to slowly build him up and all of that stuff. Don't forget that our twos are still ones, uh, especially when we get to who was running with the twos on the defensive line today, which absolutely... Uh, it makes me giggle because I love the player that took his spot at the uh, with the ones, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But talking about the offensive line, it really shows the priority of Dwayne Brown getting back healthy as soon as possible because Billy Turner at right tackle is not an option. And if Makai Becton isn't going to be playing at the right tackle position and the team is slowly building him up at the left tackle position and that's where he wants to stay and that's where the team wants to see him and he's not really an option at right tackle... Well, that makes our right tackle depth very, very suspect. You know, right now, Max Mitchell should be the starting right tackle. And Carter Warren, running with the threes, is playing at the right tackle spot and is doing a good job against the threes. That being said, the depth of the right tackle position, if, you know, Max Mitchell is at the left tackle right now and Makai Becton is running with the twos, is a little bit concerning. I hope Dwayne Brown can get back so that we can put him back at that left tackle spot. Really see a competition between Makai Becton and Dwayne Brown for that left tackle spot and just give the right side to Max Mitchell because it seems like that's where he's destined to play. He has had a very, very good camp against a very, 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 very good defensive line. And while, yes, our defensive line has been dominating the offense, there have been moments uh, of Max Mitchell shining 
and doing some good things. But with moving on from that tease, going to the defensive line, we have to talk about the fact that Jermaine Johnson is having himself such a good camp that he has dethroned Carl Lawson on the first team unit and got a lot of first team reps this practice where Carl Lawson was running with the second team, which had a domino effect because Bryce Huff got the second team reps and Will McDonald and Michael Clemens got the third team reps today. Now, this isn't an indictment on Will McDonald or Carl Lawson or Michael Clemens or anybody on any team. Remember that we use a heavy, heavy rotation. And the idea is probably to give our defensive linemen reps against defense, different defensive uh, offensive tackles and to give our offensive tackles different defensive line looks so that they can all get better. But the fact that Jermaine Johnson took a large chunk of the reps on the first team practice today really shows that Man, is this guy going to have an explosive, explosive year two in this system. A lot of mistakes from the defense having a really hard time with the offensive cadence. You can tell that Zach Wilson, who didn't have a really good day today, and I think a lot of that was uh, because of the offensive line struggles, especially the second team unit having to go up against Carl Lawson, and you could see that. Um, But... You can tell that Zach Wilson and Aaron Rodgers have been connected at the hip because their cadences have gotten very similar. Uh, Zach Wilson trying to recreate what he's seeing and what he's hearing from Aaron Rodgers. And there were back-to-back -back plays on the 11-on-11 drills where it was just free plays, offsides from the defense, getting them to jump and getting free plays and taking deep shots downfield. But a lot of offensive mistakes today from the offensive line and from the pass catchers with dropped balls. Uh, great coverage from the defense. There's this clip going around, if you haven't seen it, of... Just a wonderful diving stop by uh, DJ Reed on, I believe it was Malik Taylor. And we're starting to see the, the concerns about the depth at the wide receiver position for the New York Jets. Garrett Wilson has a low ankle sprain, which is good news. A high ankle sprain can keep him out for weeks. A low ankle sprain puts him in kind of a, not really, but kind of a day-to-day -day kind of evaluation, which means he's going to be back sooner rather than later. But with Corey Davis still out with illness, it really shows that the New York Jets wide receiving depth isn't what we might want it to be. While we do have Alan Lazard, uh, there, McCole Hardman, two guys having good practices. We saw some mistakes from those guys as well. And then that leaves, you know, uh, Alex Erickson, Jason Brownlee, Xavier Gibson, Malik Taylor, all as the guys that are going to be filling in those wide receiver roles. My expectation is that the New York Jets are definitely going to try to pivot and see what's available at the wide receiver market. Not that we desperately need a wide receiver, but we can see the 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 problem of trading away you know two wide receivers with immense potential now obviously they did it wasn't going to work with those guys in the New York Jets they have had problems with previous coaching staff and it just seemed like they were done with the New York Jets and in a year that's so important it didn't mean it didn't make sense to keep around guys who might have become a problem so sending away Elijah Moore and Denzel Mims in trade packages made sense in the grand scheme of things however all of that being said when we get to the fact that you know what this team is better with those two guys on it versus those two guys not being on it. It does suck now to see that, you know, the fractured relationship caused by Mike LaFleur in the previous offensive regime and how we weren't able to repair that to keep those very, very talented receivers with the New York Jets. It puts us in a position where we're incredibly top heavy in the wide receiver room. And don't get me wrong, Garrett Wilson is that dude. But beyond Garrett Wilson, we have a lot of just kind of guys that have potential to be, you know, wide receiver twos and wide receiver threes, but that's ass assuming a big step up in their previous production. But that was practice. Dalvin Cook was there. Expect a signing soon. Aaron Rodgers looking good. Greg the Leg being almost automatic from anything under, uh, I think it's like 58 yards this practice, which is just absolutely insane. It feels good to know that your team is running smoothly and being coached well. And all of the things are going exactly as planned. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about today's practice. And last but not least, go Jets.